Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 262R, and we're continuing with our theme, The Beginning of Sorrows. This will be part 5R. We said that a judgment is <clears throat> going to fall on the earth unlike any that's ever fallen before having ramifications <clears throat> in which <clears throat> the whole human race is going to find itself under the <sighs> the events that will transpire from this spoken judgment we said that uh, it would initiate as a destruction on the human family. <clears throat> ethnic group would turn upon ethnic group. In which, at the time of the completion of this, this judgment, uh, the dead would straddle one end of the earth to the other. There would be nobody to bury them. Out of this judgment would come a judgment that would destroy all the governments of the earth. It would destroy the areas of <clears throat> transportation, communication, <clears throat> every aspect of the political, social, military, religious aspect of Adamic society will be totally eradicated, never to rise again. Yes. You taught us that the judgment of organized religion comes first, because that's where the words should start. Mm -hmm. If any, what period of time is there between the fall of those who are the leadership and the fall of nation states? Well, it's almost simultaneous. Okay. Um, <coughs> the judgment's already starting on the religious aspect, you're going to see scandal after scandal overtake a lot of these movers and shakers. Yes. So it seems as if one thing is going to begin, but it's all encompassing. Everything is start is, is set into motion. Right. And the leaders will fall when they're supposed to fall. The governments will fall when they're supposed to mm -hmm. fall. And in sequence, I think it's going to happen just the way Jonesy's taught us before. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's in plurality. So it's the leadership of the churches first, then the governments? Well, and yes, because the scripture says uh, the judgment comes to the household of God first. Mm -hmm. It's already taking place. Mm -hmm. Judgment is upon those that have um, taken liberty with the word of God, taken license, yes. uh, done despite to the word of God, it's just going to increase in intensity. We see that the judgment deals with apostasy in the church. The judgment deals with <coughs> the, Jesus said, at the time of his coming, the body of Christ would be in deception. Sure, sure. If you looked at the situation from the eyes of uh, the very elect, <coughs> those who you would consider to be the virgins of today, this judgment is so severe they wouldn't believe it. You could you could show them every single word over and over and over and they could not receive it because yes. it's just way too much. Yes, yes. It says that uh, judgment is going to come on <clears throat> not only the leadership, it's mm. going to come on those that have chosen to follow the leadership. Yes. Yes. It's currently in vogue. Warning after warning is when you see this situation taking place, understand that the church is in a state of apostasy and it's going down, it's experiencing curses, the curse is going to lead to judgment. So by the time of the maximum uh, intensification of the judgment, then the, 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 the spoken word will go forth to everything else. And uh, all people will experience this. As a result of this, 
when the human race has fallen, turn to Jeremiah 25. Verse 26. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So what we find at the fall of the kingdoms, at the fall of the governments, the fourth empire is going to manifest in uh, fury, in, uh, in a destructive mode. Turn now to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the seventh chapter, verse And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey. Strangers comes from a Hebrew term zur, which means those that are estranged, those that are not native to a particular, in other words, aliens. Yes. I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey and, and, so it's a, it's a twofold judgment to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. <clears throat> now when it says the wicked of the earth, you would say, how can it be given to the wicked of the earth if the wicked is already under judgment? It's talking about the non-human wicked of the earth. But we see a picture of this. Turn to Psalms. Seventy-four, verse twenty. Yes. <clears throat> Remember that the judgment is on the human race, wicked, not on the non-human working. Right. Right. <clears throat> You'd say at the beginning of sorrows, when the Lord utter, roars His voice, is a judgment on the human race and not the non-humans? Yes. Yes. I would think it'd be both of them at no. the same time. No. If it's on both of them, the Luciferians couldn't take over. Right. And you can use them to... Yeah, he said, in the inhabitants of the earth. He's talking about the inhabitants of the surface world. Mm. Jeremiah 25 says that all the kingdoms of the face of the earth are going to fall. So it's on, only on the humans. Right. Not on the evil, wicked, non-human Luciferians. They're going to go on, right. and their judgment is going to come later. Later on in 26, it says that the king of Shishak shall drink. Shishak. So we know Shishak is the fourth yeah. empire. <clears throat> now we see... The other group he's talking about, the wicked of the earth, he puts a separation. So it's given into the hands of the strangers and to the wicked of the earth. Notice what it says in Psalms 74.20. Have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. The dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. It's talking here about the inhabitations of 
non-human, wicked beings. Uh, they're going to be allowed to come forth. Well, you can see them already now. People are talking about Bigfoot, Dero, lizard creatures, Mothman, skinwalker creatures. I don't know, thing in them all. Jump. Jump. These things are being allowed to have more and more freedom on the surface world and to come into greater and greater contact with the human race because the judgment is about to fall on the human race. So the wicked of the humans, by which I mean the tares, the people who run this planet, are they separated in their judgment or is their judgment part of the same? Everybody universe? gets okay. that's in contact with the, with the human order. Right. Whether they are the principalities in the heavens, okay. the humans, or the tares, all that have been involved in this system, perpetuating this system, are going to get down. Gotcha. <clears throat> uh, when you read the stuff that's being talked about, the uh, the crypto creatures, mm -hmm. cryptids. It may, yeah, cryptids, it makes your, your blood run cold. Mm. Uh, people are being scared to death, terrorized by these things. Well, they're going to be allowed to roam the surface world. Sure. Human race hasn't got a clue as about about what it's about to encounter. <clears throat> Turn now to Daniel, seventh chapter, verse Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse. We have to understand, it's going to be altered from the human domain. This is going to be a, a reality which will impose itself upon human reality mm -hmm. and totally uh, 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 swallow it up, totally obliterate it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to come under the reality of the Luciferian order. Right. It's reality. That altered description includes altered from the pseudo reality imposed by the second stringers right now. Yes. So the, the reality that they have put on will be wiped out in exactly the same way. Yes. Mm. Yes. Their, their the pseudo reality is what dominates the human race to begin with. Sure. He said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So it's going to ultimately fragment the world, the surface world. It's going to uh, render it in such a way as each leader, each individual is going to carve out for himself a fiefdom. And whatever humans are in that domain, that's where they stay. There's no roaming around from one place to another for the humans. Mm -hmm. they, they stay put. Because number one, they're going to be too scared to go beyond whatever they consider safety anyway. Because you got all sorts of stuff that's going to be roaming this world. So those who are experiencing what you've just described, the unsaved, <coughs> who may have heard of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit at some time in their past, would they ever consider those thoughts again once they're under this? I think they'll be able to. Hmm. So they're zombies then, at that point. Uh, you have to turn to uh, Revelation 17. Hmm. Verse 1 to 2. 
These are the kings that come up first. Then the Harlot City comes up afterwards. Mm -hmm. Came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials of talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants, inhabitants, human race, of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So when this thing happens, human race is going to enter into gross uh, polytheism. Mm. Gods are going to come up, and whoever they meet, that's it. That, that's it for any objective rationale the person might ever have had. At that point, does the soul of the person you've just described belong to the king who is ruling over? Sure. Okay, and that's it. It's done. Sure. It's the only ones that have any any kind of a chance are those that have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. Right. Uh, and you see this. Illustrated, Revelation, 13th chapter, about verse 8. Yes. <clears throat> and all, A-L-L, -L, all that dwell upon the earth, surface world, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So the only ones that have any kind of a chance are those whom the Holy Spirit dwells in. They've heard and they've received at some point in their life. That, I believe, is one reason why the Father is so long-suffering. The Gospel goes forth. People hear. The Holy Spirit indwells them. They don't care about committing anything. They go on living their life, but they still have the Spirit in them. Yep. When this takes place, they now have at least a chance mm. of making some sort of uh, uh, um, comeback and uh, reclamation of their souls. The rest of the people, no, their history. So this is the, the final gasp, if you wish of the Holy Spirit in them. It's at this point that the decision has to be made, and if they don't do it, it's all worth it. <coughs> They're done. They're done. Yeah. Mm. So at this time, the, the age of grace is gone. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, everybody's on his own at that point. The age of grace ends at the beginning of the age of judgment. Beginning of beginning sorrows. sorrows. Yeah. In a heartbeat. It's over. People don't seem to grasp that the Lord, I put it in these terms so we can grasp what I'm talking about, the Lord has lowered the bar in the age of grace because people have slid in, oh, yeah, I've, you know, I've just done it by the hair of their chinny chin chin, as they say. The age of grace allows you to be a pretender, as you may have a granual experience with. Let me hear that word one more time. The age of grace allows the individual to be a pretender. Praise the Lord. Praise and, the you know, Lord. to a great degree, allow himself to think he's getting away with it. Yeah. But they're going to become, they're going to come up real, an agonizing reappraisal mm. when this passes by. That's the real gnashing of teeth, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, we're going to take a look at some things that are going to take place. <clears throat> Daniel 7.23 says the fourth empire will dominate the earth, devour it. In other words, its influence will totally envelop the surface world and everything on it. Turn now to Daniel, the second chapter, verse 43. You know, when I think about this stuff, I tremble. Mm. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> Daniel 
<coughs> Daniel the second chapter 43. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, the iron men, the fourth empire, Luciferians, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So, the different groups of the Luciferians that comprise the Fourth Empire are going to suddenly appear and dominate whatever area they happen to choose to dominate, where the humans are congregated, they're going to manifest and the human race let me putty in their hands. They, they won't have a clue as to what's taking place. All they're going to want to do is try to survive if they can get over the shock and the terror that they're feeling about you saw it happen with the mall. Yes. They <laughs> that was an eye opener for a lot of them, I'm gonna guarantee you. I believe it, yes, absolutely. So this is you just take this 10,000 times greater on a global scale. So let me ask, the Harlot City. Yes. At what point does it extend its dominion from the inner, uh, inner Earth up to the surface where Pergamos is? Do we see this happen just after the end of Antichrist number seven? The Harlot City? Mm -hmm. When, does it, when can you see it on the surface, is what I'm asking. Well, the kings of the earth have to establish a mercantile system first. Okay. And that will take a while. Then the Harlot City will appear, and it says that she does business with all the kings of the earth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the kingdoms of the earth. Establishing a system. So I'd say you're probably talking about maybe months after these appear. Oh, that quickly. Okay. Yeah. So then, that's during the reign of the first Antichrist, all thereabouts. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. There'll be so much taking place, and then in that respect, on a, understand this is not linear, this is plurality of mm. existence. Mm. So when you say making contact with the kings on the surface, there's already contact okay. because they knew each other before. before. Yes, of course. <laughs> Let's go on. <clears throat> now, Scripture indicates at the judgment, that is Jeremiah 25, verse 30 and 31, where he speaks, pronounces judgment, the judgment falls on individuals according to their doings. Scripture indicates at this time that the judgment, some will be allowed to escape who will then repent? Ezekiel 7, verse 15 to The sword is without, the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning every one for his iniquity. And then it goes on to talk about the, the state of uh, the mental state, the emotional state. They're going to be shaken to their core, humbled, uh, just totally uh, trying to deal with what's going on and what they have done to get them where they are. Yes. Where are the righteous in this? Nowhere around. Nowhere around. The righteous is not in this situation. Because the righteous don't come under any kind of punishment, judgment. God, yeah, God hears them. They're already busily engaged in 
progressing to prepare for the gathering. As soon as this thing hits, mm. the righteous are going to be set on a path, ordained in eternity, for them to begin to do what they've been called to do. We're looking here at only those under the judgment. Yeah. Do you imagine the righteous that he's talking about, obviously before the gathering, being uh, here, as he described it, in churches like this, for example? The, sure. The, the fallen structure of the old organized religion. Well, what God will do is he's going to prepare a place which will be under protection right. when everything else collapses. That's the place where he will gather his people for a particular time, a particular purpose. It will be a place in which, it's, number one, it will be cleansed. God's not going to lead his people into some sin-filled, right. destitute region. It's going to be cleansed, for, prepared for his people, just like the estates, mm -hmm. the community, communities that will ultimately be they, they will ultimately be sent to. God's all got all that uh, in which the, the things are prepared for his people when they when it, go in there. They can hit the ground running and do what needs to be done. What we look at here, we're going to compare scripture to scripture. These are on the mountains. There are others in other areas. They've all repented. It's a small fraction have repented. Turn to Matthew twenty-five, uh, Matthew twenty-four, verses seven to nine. <clears throat> For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's these we read about in Ezekiel, the seventh chapter. Been allowed to escape so they can be allowed to repent of the spirit in them and <clears throat> this happens just before the fourth empire makes its appearance on the earth uh, demic orders collapse no kingdoms no government no nothing the luciferians take up residence establish their dominions with these that have repented being surrounded they will mingle themselves with the seed of men. Now turn to Mark, 13th chapter. <clears throat> Understand, everything religious is going to be corrupted by the Luciferian intelligences. Mark 13, verses 8 to 9. <clears throat> For nation shall rise against nation, <clears throat> kingdom against kingdom. There shall be earthquakes, diverse places. There shall be famines and troubles. There, These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves. For they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues you shall be beaten. You shall be brought before rulers and kings, fourth empire, for my sake, for a testimony against them. All religions will be under Luciferian influence, so twisted and distorted that they will not be they will not acknowledge the name of Christ. 
you're going to still have Christian quote unquote cults that are twisted and distorted and no longer honor Christ. Seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. The individual will be allowed to worship his gods. But anybody, these guys that have repented, claim to be Christians, that's it. They're done for. They won't have a chance. Yeah. Where there'll be remnants of the written word. None. No, no, sir. No. No. So everything that you currently know is what you'll be saying. That's right. If you don't know it, you can't say it. Exactly. So quickly back to these false churches, I guess you'd call them. I'm imagining these to be those of organized religion, which of course have fallen, who now immediately accept whatever that God small G is. Sure. And in, in their heart, don't forget, these, some, some, some of them are born again Christians. Sure. Who have been completely uncommitted or whatever. Sure. They now replace in their heart the God small G. Sure. What happens to the Holy Spirit to that person? It's going to be cut off. Completely. By the Father, yeah. And in particular, while well, there's judgment going to fall on him. Does, now, we are still talking about before the rapture, so does the Holy Spirit in the heart of that person leave the earth with everybody else at the, uh, at the rapture? The Holy Spirit gets cut, cut off at a judgment. That person does his thing, the Holy Spirit is totally neutralized okay. in his influence. When the Lord returns at the gathering, Let's go on. <clears throat> so you could say that at that point the Holy Spirit is in the hearts of men, is gathered sure. at the gathering. Sure. Very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you have here, you look at Matthew, it's giving you basically the life of the individual that got caught up in the beginning of sorrows. Some people are going to be offended uh, and renounce Christianity outright. Yep. Some people are going to embrace. You don't have, have to be a scholar. Every Christian knows what he needs to do mm -hmm. to get right with the Lord if he's born again. Because you can't get born again in ignorance. You have to know enough to have the Lord come into your life. Well, that basically, when this takes place, they know what they got to do, and that what has to do is testimony and the word. How you knew that you got saved, and the fact that you <clears throat> acted on that to be saved—that's their testimony. They're going to speak before these Luciferian beings before they're done away with. Mr. Jones, you know, in the scripture where it says, "Those who walk in the Spirit." Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, those who walk in the flesh and those who walk in the spirit. Now, we're talking about born-again Christians doing both of these things. Mm -hmm. However, if you're walking more in the flesh than in the spirit, then the Luciferians are going to know that. They're going to be able to run rough shot over you easily because you, you stand, you, you don't present any kind of challenge. Right. That would be true in this reality. Okay. It's not going to be true there. There's no walking in the flesh. You are totally in the flesh or you are totally in the spirit. Mm. There is no, <laughs> none of that. A person that's in the flesh has renounced his commitment to Christ totally. He has to in order to survive. He isn't even going to mention the name of Jesus. A person that's in the spirit, that's all he's going to mention, knowing what's going to happen to him, but also knowing he's delivered the soul. The Father does all things wisely. He's engineered this. Because this is all you have here today in the age of grace is fence-sitters, pretenders, <laughs> that think they're getting away with something. <clears throat> well, the Father's going to hes going to bring that to a, sh a short end very quickly yes. Yes. with the beginning of sorrows. Now, what we want to take a look at, turn to Luke. 
21st chapter 36, Scripture indicates those who dwell in Christ will not be affected by the judgment, but will dwell under the protection of the Lord. Luke 21, 36. Pray always. <clears throat> Make sure I've got the right chapter here. So it would help to get to Luke 21. It would help. Yes. Okay, Luke 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all, A-L-L, -L, all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So what he's saying here, if you're accounted worthy to escape all these things, you're going to be preserved until you stand before him when he comes to gather his people. If the person finds himself in the group that's playing fast and loose with his time here, thinking that he's going to be able to deal with the situation that's going to arise, he's fooling himself. Yeah. He's going to be in that group, Matthew 24. Yes. Having to make a decision. Do I totally renounce my relationship with Christ? Or do I embrace it knowing that I'm going to be killed as a result of it? That's the only two choices he's going to have. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Second chapter, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. So it's talking about those who are now playing fast and loose, pretending. They're in the judgment. Yeah. He's talking about <coughs> better evaluate what is really taking place here while you have time. So he's talking to those who are paying attention. Yes. It says, it may be, ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So the Lord is going to temper his judgment with mercy on some. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel, the seventh chapter. He'll be allowed to escape and go to the mountains because the Lord knows. They've seen, they've seen, they've heard, and if they're given the chance, they'll repent which is what they do. Sure. He also knows that their number is going to be up when the Luciferians take control. They're going to be martyrs. But he's giving them this chance to save their souls. Mm. Everybody else, no. So, yes. in saving their souls, they <coughs> live on the new earth. Yes. yes. Some people probably have not yet realized that we've, we are already at the point where things such as retirements no longer exist. That's already gone. Because for a retirement to be of any use, it usually comes in at the end of our working life. Well, since we're already at the cusp of the beginning of sorrows, the moment that that reality happens, all those human thoughts of retirement and little cocktails with little you know, umbrellas in it and all that kind of stuff, it's already done, it's finished. Huh, long before that. 
the judgment falls. It's going to be finished. Because they're going to see the collapse of the way that they thought that they would experience yes. all of this to begin with. Every aspect of society is going to be, fall. The economic, the social, the political. People are talking about take our country back and vote Trump in the office. It's too late for that. Sure, sure. So I'm going to ask you a question which I used to ask you, and this is probably for the last time. Is it this year that we expect to see the appearance of the beginning of science? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I think that we've already had the last Christmas. I believe so. Christmas. I don't believe we're going to make it to uh, an election. Yeah. Uh, the idea is this. If you take a look at what's taking place, the, the scripture here, see if I can find it. Verse 8, chapter 3. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. Let's talk about the judgment. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, to pour upon them mine indignation, even on my fierce anger. On, on, on. This is what's happening now. Yeah. You take a look at what's going on. NATO is marshalling its forces, weaponry, armor, planes, flooding into the European theater. They're preparing for war with Russia. Sure. Russia's buttressing its military. It's gathering food supply. China's hoarding food. Yep. Russia's hoarding <coughs> food. People that know what time it is, they're hoarding stuff right. because they know things are going to go down right. very shortly in a war. Uh, people are waiting to hear, hear about this on CNN, MSNBC. Yep. You're going to hear it on the mainstream media. You better see it from a perspective of wisdom and prepare for it. So whilst that's going on, we see that the U.S., the nations of Europe, giving away those things that they should be hoarding, because they've drunk the cup. It's that's so right. Simple. That's right. What we find here, though, but the Lord is gathering the nations, gathering the kingdoms for Matthew 24, mm. verses 7 to 9, the beginning of science. It's happening as we speak. Israel. <coughs> Israel is man, <coughs> virtually in a two-front war. Mm. It's got seven fronts opposition. And that isn't even yet. Egypt and Jordan, <coughs> Moab, Ammon, Dad, when we see Israel nuke Damascus, that's it. That's it. And you see these guys armed to the tooth to the teeth getting ready to try to come down on Israel. Iran probably have nukes at that time. North Korea have nukes. Everything is ready. Well, it's it's ready now. Sure. I've heard um, democratic pundits and all politicians, I'll say, uh, talk about black swan events. So in their minds, they're already preparing for the cessation of uh, the, the election process. That's, that's yes. done. It's all, it's sure. all over. Sure. There won't be another election. Yeah. Uh, before that, you're going to have the collapse of uh, the, 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 the essentials in society. Sure. <clears throat> well, you have uh, this business of, um, of uh, international trade being erupted mm -hmm. in the Red Sea. It's going to be disrupted in the oceans <clears throat> uh, because of fratricide, fratricide on the part of countries going to war against each other. Up in the Arctic, you got America standing in opposition to Russia and China. Uh, all over the world, people are arming for the, ba the, the great climax. And yet and still, <clears throat> people here thinking about their vacations, yep. uh, thinking about the next raise, the, the new car, 
they're going to get a wake-up call they weren't expecting. Anyway, <clears throat> we're almost through here. So the Lord, we see the Lord is gathering the nations, <coughs> gathering the kingdoms. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches those who are accounted worthy will be free, be free to teach others of the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 46. This is what we are waiting for. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? There are those that are called from eternity for this time. Yes. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Now, if we were going through the stuff that they're going through in Matthew 24, what time would you have to feed God's sheep? Sure. That wouldn't be You're too busy trying to survive. Too busy trying to find a place of safety. Too busy trying to deal with the horrors that's going on on the earth where people are dropping dead of heart attacks. What time would you have to feed anybody? So God has to have you under his protection so you're free to be able to do what he's called you to do. Blessed is that servant when his Lord, <clears throat> when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I send to you, you shall make him ruler over all his goods. Principle. <clears throat> Scripture teaches after the judgment the gospel will be proclaimed to all on the earth. Matthew 24 verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom of the heavens shall be preached from the heavens to everybody on the earth, to all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, closing with Daniel, 12th chapter, verse 8 to 10. Notice what he said in Matthew. Gospel will be preached, then shall the end, then shall the end, then shall the end come. Daniel 12, 8-10. Daniel is given blueprint for the beginning of sorrows. He's given the whole thing. The process of events that are going to take place. When you read this, you'll see the process of things are going to take place, the outcome of it all, Daniel is given the whole ball of wax, but he doesn't understand, he doesn't have a clue of what's being said. Verse 8, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So he's asking for, <laughs> tell me plainly, what's the explanation? <laughs> And he, the angel, said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed. The words are closed up in what words? What he's been given. Till the time of the end. This gospel shall go to all the world for witness, then shall the end come. Notice what it says. Many shall be purified and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise. Who is that wise and faithful servant? The wise shall understand. They're going to be given the authority to explain the gospel that has been preached to the whole world, what the significance of it is. They're going to know this, Daniel 12. They're going to understand Revelation because that's where the gospel is preached from. All the history, all the destiny that's 
uh, uh, consumed that, that constitutes this uh, uh, treasure trove of knowledge is going to be given to those who God has prepared for this time to be fed so they can be prepared right. for the rapture and the tribulation period. So that uh, commission or authority to distribute as you describe it opens up at the beginning of sorrows. You're not saying that someone who is a priest teacher is unable to give these truths before the time, mm -hmm. just that those who were to be taught won't appear until that time. Until the time, okay. yes. So we'll be prepared for now. Right. We will understand because the Holy Spirit is the repository of all wisdom. Because the Holy Spirit's guide in us. Mm. You will maintain, you will retain everything that you hear <coughs> and more. And at the time that you need to speak it, you'll speak it and you will have total understanding, total clarity.